figures are more than just a subject, they're actually a form of art. They're something that an artist spends a lifetime studying. Making a figure is going to create an illusion of a presence, and that illusion can be highly real, or it can be a strong feeling of a person that's done in quite an abstracted and stylized way. But there is that presence always in a strong figure work, which is what I think as viewers we react to. It's what we as humans are programmed to uh, appreciate. I can't remember ever making a conscious decision that it was a career, but sculpture was the thing I wanted to do, found time to do amongst everything else, and it took over when it had a chance to take over. So I guess it was a vocation. I was born towards the end of the war, and my parents took me away from England before I was even one year old, uh, to South Africa and then on to New Zealand when I was about five. I was always making things out of uh, modelling hobby materials, and they were mostly little figure things. Uh, I do remember theorising that if I made a figure, starting with the intestines and the organs and built a skin around it, that there would be no reason why it wouldn't function as a miniature movable figure. A bit of a push and it would all start uh, moving and the heart would start pumping. This sculpture at this stage is, is a fragment of a bigger piece. This is the face part. This is enjoyable. There's something about making figure work which every time is a creation of life that has a touch of magic about it. The reality is created and the work kind of lives. So although it looks like scrape by scrape and uh, small change by incremental improvement, in fact it's balancing and it's realising and bringing it to life. This clay is my lifelong friend, really. It's, uh, it's made every piece of sculpture, one, one at a time, of course. And because my sculptures tend to be over and over again figures, I kind of think of the clay as containing, as it comes out of the bins, eyes and ears and hands and bodies, and uh, they all reshape themselves into the new piece. It must be over 30 years back to the... 70s, I've been using it. Of course, it comes and goes. Uh, it, the casting process loses a little every time and I'm bringing in fresh New Zealand clay into it. So my original sculptures must be some small percentage of that, less than half of it, but uh, they're all there somewhere. Cervandia is an artist's sculpture garden, that is a, a display of art by just one sculptor, an endless one-person exhibition. When people come to look at the, the work we have here at Cervandia, there's such a lot of sculpture that is conceived in the same way that I think they build up a way of, of dealing with that. And at the end of the experience, it's been reinforced. One piece has taught them to look at the next. And I think they get a, a, a stronger taste and a stronger idea of how my sculptures work. The acupuncture covered in acupuncture. My partner, Tim McQuannell, and I decided to set up Zealandia. And the way it, we work it is that Tim does the greeting, the guiding, the looking after the, the visitors and I uh, stay out of that to some extent because it's hard to make work and also be involved in thinking about how it looks to other people. It's too conflicting, uh, I think, two conflicting activities. She has this rather severe go-away face and then she has this rather beautiful face, but the moving arm can serve to reveal or conceal the faces might be a good barometer for somebody's household, mightn't it? <laughs>
My pieces represent a figure or a face in the way that maybe a, a tribal artist might use the art of the tribe to make a statement and put their individual take on it. I'm using a way of putting together a face and it's based on our Western art tradition plus influences from living here in New Zealand. And I'm using these generic faces and figures in formal ways with formal ideas, which um, I think is making them into works of art. This is the last three or four hours of finishing the surface on the skin, really. I aim for perfection, but I accept that it's never going to be perfect and it's going to have um, lots of less than perfect uh, at the end of the day. Perfect would be nice. It would be possible to, to get that machine perfection, but not necessarily desirable, I think. I like a, a little bit of evidence of the artist, and I like the work to, um, to be like an actor on stage that suspends the disbelief and, and takes you into a different world, hopefully. Being a sculptor, it's a particularly um, complicated uh, way to exist with all, its, all the resources I need and, and the support people and the, all the junk that I accumulate. We're making this section of the final three-part work. At this stage, we've got to the uh, plaster making on top of the finished clay work. My colleagues, sculptors Tanya Blong and Brian Jones, are helping me to put a plaster mould over the surface of the clay, and that plaster mould is defined by shim walls, little pieces of metal, and we crack the plaster on those walls to open it into pieces, which are going to be, then be reunited, cleaned out, where the wax goes in. The new work I'm making has been generated uh, in response to being asked by clients for a piece for their beautiful house. They have a collection of artwork that complements the house, that's very open, very airy, and that's the way they'd like to see a piece go. So I've started a, a, a sequence of little study works in which I've been exploring the idea of structures. Here's a little uh, head study, which is made up of interlocking blocks and, and their negative spaces. And the idea started with this little drawing here, and it went into this kind of a thinking through. And then I started to search for some more complications. Whereas this piece here is a single pile of blocks, this one's become a, a double pile of blocks with a, a negative space. But it's a, it's, it's a more complicated realization of, of the subject. So at this point, I started to think this is the spirit of building. And I started to remember those saints that are carved holding little cathedrals. And they're the protectors of little cathedrals or of towns. They hold a little city. So I, I then tried to conjure up um, something that, that is going in that direction. And this, that's what this piece is here. I need to make another small maquette that, uh, that solves all these problems and also that convinces me enough to, to take it to the client and say, this is what I want to make. There's a strange problem with making artworks and it's the balance between making the work for yourself, which the audience wants it to be, but the artist knowing uh, what the audience really wants and knowing that if they go in a certain direction, the audience is going to be very happy to acquire that artwork, to reward the artist. It's a balance but, uh, that has to be maintained of being a little bit difficult where my thinking's coming from. But also being a little bit pleasing. It's a, it's a house that's full of light and space. Mm. So 
I went away with that thought and I've made a piece which is in, in that family, it's got a positive and a negative kind of an element and it's built on the architectural idea. Sounds great. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> so, she's a little bit like those saints that you find in cathedrals that carry a little model of the cathedral and they protect the cathedral or maybe it's the, the virgin and she protects the town. So she's got a little building here in one hand. It's not a packet of cornflakes, it's actually like a little commercial building and she's got a house, a little domestic house in that hand. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Mm. The making of the sculpture is done with the understanding of how it's going to be made. Uh, right from the beginning of conceptualizing the piece, you have to be aware of what's doable. In fact, there are artists that uh, make things that are impossible and then yeah. hand them over to be cast into bronze. Okay. And the craftspeople have to rise to the occasion. It's like building a house, I guess. Uh, you can't design something that can't be built, and the, the sculpture has to be designed in a way that can be made. That's it. This is fettling the wax and every stage has to be um, tidied up, meaning that the wax stage has to be tidied up and then it has to be tidied up again when it's cast in bronze. That also has to be fettled. So I'm taking away the evidence of casting each time, which um, is where the plaster moulds fitted together. and also any surface blemishes that happened in the handling and the pouring. Following the process through and looking at how it, the bronzes are cast at Arc Works Foundry in Auckland, and those waxes that I made in my studio have come in here and the waxes go into the wax room where they have a tree put on them of wax rods which becomes the tunnel for the bronze, the waxes go through to be dipped in the material that builds up the mould, many layers of that, then it comes back out into the workshop, the wax is melted out and then the empty mould is turned back the other way and into it is poured the bronze, which we'll see in a wee while. So we're at the stage at which they're getting the the, the empty moulds ready for the bronze pour.
I'm most happy in the studio and most happy when in the studio when starting new work. When I scale it up from the maquette, I, I do do it a lot by eye, although working to the, the size that it has to be. Uh, I allow room for variation and I do experiment with stressing uh, the ideas a little bit more or tweaking them slightly. But basically it's going to follow the maquette. There's almost an implied contract. What the clients have approved is going to be what they receive. I like to think uh, an artist is as good as their best work, their best achievement is what they can be judged by. And uh, I feel it's a great honour that people have uh, followed the work and collected it at various stages. But I guess it's sharing the work. My relationship with my public would be that I try to, to offer um, the best product I can make at a reasonable price then it goes out into the world where it has to survive on its own terms. If we start by knocking back some of the weld, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a look at the uprighting. Right. Uh, this kit piece went to the foundry as two separate units and got welded together once it was cast in bronze. And it came back to the workshop with the beads of the weld to be tidied up, plus uh, a little bit of the evidence of the casting, uh, which all had to be ground off and then a process, of, a sequence of sanding uh, uh, was needed to finish it off. There, there's a coarse sanding, a fine sanding, uh, a certain amount of detail, grindstone work, and then a, a general, um, a kind of a burnishing finish with a random orbital sander to try and integrate the whole surface uh, take out some of the tool, most of the tooling and uh, prepare it for the next stage which is the patinering, the, the, the surfacing. This is going to be black so we're going to use a heat um, chemical to blacken the surface and then it'll have a wax finish to make it look um, cherished and to help it with standing up in, in the sun. There needs to be a, an element of risk in, in making the, the sculpture. So pushing to make something a little bit bigger or a little bit Lovely. different and making a risk within that that it'll go wrong is going to give the work a little bit more tension and a bit more vitality. So I suppose experience has taught me that you can't play it safe. And, I, and it's not a lifetime that's given me the answers, it's a lifetime that's given me the questions.
The working artist is really uh, obsessing about one work at a time. You can't think about everything while you're doing the one work. So from time to time you do stop and look at the balance. It makes me think of myself as different people at different ages. I, I look at uh, one group of work and it's like I can barely remember that person who made that and, and what frame of mind they were in. It's the next piece of work that's going to be the one that gets it right. 